Me? Yeah. I'm talking I've, to you. I'm um, talking yeah, it's only me and you on it, I suppose. I've been, I've been, I've never asked a question. I've been in the audience. I, I quite enjoyed it. The, the uh, FA, uh, no, the LMA done a load in, in, in lockdown. Right. And uh, there were some real, some real good ones. Eddie Jones was, in fact, I've got to look at his book now on my desk. Eddie Jones yeah. is one. It, it's, it's really good. Yeah, really, really good. Because right, right, right now, so far, we have a, a, a 144, uh, 155 participants. Um, uh, uh, from Timothy Carter to all panellists. You are I've lovely. Just, thank, thank you, Timothy. That, I've just seen that, yeah. Appreciate oh, that, Timothy. Uh, 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 let me just check. I haven't been to makeup yet. Sorry. Uh, it's, been, it's been a busy day today. So um, so that, that was a nice start off for the evening, wasn't it, Glenn? You know, being yeah, We're just going to wait for a, a few more people to, to come in before we really get going. Um, you know, evening all from Luke and Stuart and uh, I think I saw Stuart. Oh, Stuart, as well. yeah, Stuart Deegans. I hope he's going to ask a question tonight because normally when they come to the games, he doesn't ask any questions nine years ago. Hailing Island, from the Dave, Dave Hayes from Hailing Island, that's difficult, isn't it? Dan, hello, Dan, Dan Ravel. Um, nice to see everybody coming in. This is great fun. We, we, we're going to have a bit of a. Uh, um, it's different, isn't it? Definitely different. It's very different to being on the stage where I, I get to shout you in and you know, ask for a big round of applause, but. Um, but, uh, oh, sorry, yeah. Stuart. Sorry, Stuart. Yeah, he asked a question yeah. last week. I do apologise. Evening all to, to, to Martin. And, um, there's a lot of people out here that are obviously Steve McCarthy. I'm going to try and read everybody's name out, so keep going. We'll, we'll, we'll get there. Um, it, it, it's really nice to see everyone. George Jones. Evening, George. Georgie boy. Georgie Paul. Uh, George. <laughs> George, yeah, we have to say, has been an exemplar in the, uh, in the flat. He's been uh, totally unbelievable. In the flat. Well, the flat in the shop. <laughs> in the shop, he's been incredible. He's been in the shop every single day. He's the guardian of the shop. Um, can, I ask, that, can I ask? Can I ask the first question, Ivan? Did why didn't Why didn't George give me a discount when I went in the shop? That's the first question. He, he never gave you any if discount. That, if someone come up and said sack George, yeah, I'm not asking for that, but just a bit of discount next time. <laughs> Evening, Tommy. Did yeah, yeah, it's. Um, we, I, 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 I know I've missed a few out there because there were just, just loads of them coming in. You know, Callum uh, McGarry. Good afternoon from Columbia. Hey. Right. Hey, ah, brilliant, uh, brilliant. Lauren Gibault, I think I got that right. I hope I got that right. Michael Stone, yeah, yeah, this is great. This is going to be really good. Big concern about this, that one. <laughs> it's got the white seats. Jer Jeremy's there, Stuart Stone again. Hodges, a global legend, yeah, yeah, yeah. Vegas, an old Thierry, Vegas, that's from Vegas, right. Thierry, yeah. Thierry. That is, um, that's fantastic. I bet, the, I bet it's a bit warmer in Vegas than it is here, but very nice. Nick Prowse, um. Gaffer, you sat in the bedroom, in the bathroom? Well, no, no, bathroom. I'm actually in, I'm, I'm living with my parents, so I'm in the box room. I'm Timothy Lumsden at the moment. The only, because you know, it's busy downstairs, I've got myself away and I'm sat in the window. I've got the window seat. So they're, they're, this is my bedroom and there's my curtains. Ah, very so, nice. So nice. after this, I'll be just diving straight into bed. So that is the curtains from the four post. We're probably Peter, Peter Schilling. <laughs> Peter Schilling's just said, Good, uh, Peter Schilling, how are you? Uh, under 12s Merton is take me. It was, it was my teacher who took the under 12s to Merton. Might have been East Merton. Peter Schilling, yes. Remember him well. You sure that's not your toilet? Right, okay. Right, we're, we're now, right, we're, I think it's time that we start on the questions. Um, we, we have 195 people in the room at the moment, which I'm sure there, there are more. Uh, there are more to come. And yeah, someone has noticed that I've, I'm wearing my glasses and not many people have seen me wear my glasses. So. Uh, there you go, very good. What's Charlie saying? You need to learn virtual. Yeah, I've got sorry, Charlie. I do apologize. <laughs> I've got I've got a great backdrop. Oh, there's a picture of Sanch scoring the uh the, the, the cup final winner up there. So uh yeah, but, but anyway, we'll turn it around a bit. So okay, let, 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 let's get started, shall we? Um the, the, the first question tonight has, has has been asked by John Martin, um and it's not uh it's got absolutely nothing to do with, with Glenn as such, but but um we said we'd start off with it, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to answer this before I talk about a bit of housekeeping and, and, and so on. So, um, John Martin has asked if I could update us with the latest figures on uh, debentures and hospitality places and everything. So, you know, as, a, as a preamble to the evening, I'm, uh, um, I'm just going to give you a, a, a brief update. Um, debentures, we've sold in excess of 2,000 debentures. Which is, which is a great figure uh, and has helped us out hugely. Um, there are other things that I haven't got the actual figure on uh, non-refundable season tickets at the moment because people are working on it all the time. And um, quite frankly, I didn't get to this until um, 
uh, quite late this evening due to working very hard all day today. Um, so it's over 2,000 debentures. In, in hospitality, the, the, the actual figures that, that have been sold with debentures, 1,000 pound debentures, is, is about 130. Um, so, you know, that's a, a very nice figure there. But, but the debenture figures um, do not include um, uh, a box that we've sold and um, uh, all of our sponsors that are in there. So all in all, our, our, we're, we're probably up to about 170, 180 in hospitality, which in these COVID times is, is, is not bad going. You know, if we were opening next week, I would imagine that we'd have sold everything that we've got because uh, um, that's going to uh, fire everything up there. So, um, so that's just a quick update for you there. And if anyone wants to know anything else, they can always email in or message in and I'll, I'll, I'll try and answer as best I can. But that's not what we're here for. We're here to, to uh, meet the manager and to, to ask Lynn a load of um, football related questions. So uh, fans can ask questions live using the text box function. Um, use this for questions. There's also a chat box for people who want to discuss stuff. We won't be able to follow that all the time. So don't expect us to answer everything on the chat box. Um, if you'd like to ask your question on screen, click the raise your hand icon and we will call you into the conversation. Remember to unmute and turn video on. That would be handy because we'd like to know who we're actually talking to. So, um, uh, I've got a question here. Glenn, this is the first one for you. Um, it's a question from Mark Hendricks. Um, and it's, uh, Glenn. You seem to put on subs after 75 minutes only. Can I ask what your thoughts are behind this? Is it a squad age stroke experience? Uh, no, I think I put, I think at, at Swindon, I put them on an 80, 85th minute, 86 minute. No, I think, I think, you know, you, you don't really want to do it at half time unless there's an injury or something drastically has gone wrong uh, and we're getting you know, mild, massively outplayed. So I don't look at it then. But we always look, it always, I don't know if it, we've, we've been in the league for the five, every league game, we've been in the league. So you're going at half time and you, they're going to, the, the other team are going to change something. So it's normally seeing what they do and how they change their shape. And if they put subs on, we always look at what they do and who they're putting on and, and what they do. So sometimes it's a reaction from that. Sometimes it was just, it's just maybe seeing out the game, freshening things up. Yeah, 100% freshening things up. And Saturday, in fact, a couple of Saturday, we, we delayed it a little bit, but I just put, I just put, uh, I just tried to shore it up a little bit. Didn't look like we was going to get the second goal, so I just made sure that we uh, we got the clean sheet over there. So it's not necessarily seventy-five minutes. It, it, we, we sometimes we're proactive if we need to do stuff, but if we're in control and we're quite happy, then we just maybe react to what they're doing. But you know, it's um, it's, it's I don't I don't set out to I don't really set out to have. Obviously, I've got people in mind. I know what we can go to and what we can change. Um, but uh, and I'll have a look at that seventy-five minute. I wasn't aware of that. Okay, um, that's a very comprehensive answer. Um, the, the, the second question is from Matthew Grant. Um, it is, Glenn, who are the coaches slash managers in the game that you look up to? And who are the biggest influences on your style of management? Um, well, I think it's all the people you, all the people that you've, you've worked with or worked for or worked under. You, you've got a massive... Um, I mean, I, I think I had quite a few clubs, so there was always, you take the good from some, some were absolutely awful and didn't learn a thing from, and others you do. So uh, the most time I spent was obviously under uh, Dave Bassett, uh, Dara Grady before that, but then, you, you know, you, you, you learn things, you learn things. I mean, I worked for, for a year with Harry, or a couple of months with Harry Redknapp. Uh, so, you know, and, and talking to Joe Jordan and Kevin Bond, their staff. So it's just anybody, anybody you can pick their brains, anybody you can take a little bit from. I mean, Mark Hughes, his organisation was fantastic. Uh, the way he is very methodical and everything was thorough. Uh, and and it, it was done to a, a fantastic level of professionalism. It was the best of the best. So it probably, it probably Mark, Mark has, you know, Dave Bassett, the attention to detail and bits and pieces on the game, but Mark making sure that everything's good off the pitch, everything's right, the environment's right. I mean, I think that I think that when you're when you're working in the Premier League, you've got probably twenty multi-millionaires who you're dealing with. So you've got to stay in the best hotel. You've got to have the best travel. Otherwise, they'll just check out and move somewhere else and get a suite somewhere else. So it was just it was just making sure that it's not just on the pitch; it's everything around it. You know, the whole the whole package, the food, uh, your tra the whole the whole um, the whole package that comes through being a footballer, the environment we're in, and making it the best we can. So. 
yeah, I've, 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 I've learned a lot, but then you know, I'm probably them, probably Mark Youth, Dario, and, and Harry and Dave Bassett uh, have probably been key. Okay. So, um, that's a very comprehensive answer. That's, that, that's really good. I do want to say, what we normally do is we normally do 45 minutes each way on, on, on these evenings. Now, we're very happy to do that, but if people are getting bored, then, then we'll see that by the participants dropping off. Um, and we'll, 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 we'll probably uh, um, call it a day. We've already got four questions in the q and I'm going to carry on with the list that was sent in in advance and we will get to the, the Q&A soon. Um, these next questions, and there are six of them, <laughs> are all from uh, one person, from Dave Hayes. So well done, Dave. You've put a lot of thought into this and uh, I hope these give you the answers that, 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 that you want. So uh, the first question is, why do we play the system we do? Three five two, when it leaves us fragile at the back. So um, yeah, there's the question from Dave Hayes. Why do we play three five two? Um, perhaps you'd like to. Uh, yeah, jump? yeah. I mean, again, look, the question back to Dave: Is it a three five two or five three two? Uh, it can be anything. It's quite fluid. It, it can move to one to the other. I think when we when when we go back to when when Wally was a manager when we first came in. Uh, what Wally, well, it was key to have two centre. We, we felt it was key to have two centre forwards on the pitch. Everyone now plays four three three with one centre forward and maybe a couple wide. But we wanted two, so we, we tried to play four four two, um, and and basically didn't have the didn't have the personnel to play four four two. So you know we just spoke about it and we used to talk regularly about it, talk about formations, and and we we settled on the three five two, uh, and it served us absolutely fantastically that year with a mission impossible. Um, you know, we we couldn't have we couldn't have wished for any better, and we got the points we we deserved, and we got the points to stay up, which against all the odds, by the way. So then the next season, we thought, well, you know, it's been good. We'll go with it. We we can work at it, and it's a thing that thing that you can improve. And now, uh, now you know, I just want to make be the best we can at it. Uh, we can move. We went we went against um, where did we go to a back four? Accrington. We went to a back four and four three three. We can go three four three. Uh, you know, we I just like I just like having the whip, and I like having the whip. The crosses coming in, and the two in the box, uh, and we're coming up more and more. More and more teams are playing that way. I think England played it the other night. Uh, they played it in the, the last this last international break. A couple of times they played it. So you know, it's it's uh, it's a good way of playing, um, and it can be successful if you get the right people in key areas, uh, and we get the ball in the box. You can see that at the moment we've got uh, two centre forwards on five goals, three for bigs. And two for Ryan, so it's creating chances and giving us that, you know, creating chances, getting the ball in the box that, that hopefully gets us to win. So that that's how I see it. And, and again, it suits it suits the personnel. It suits the personnel at the moment. I'm not saying we'll always be like that, but it's something that we still we still can can be we still can improve on. It still could be a, a, we can still do it better, and then, and we're endeavouring to try and you know to, to make it better. Okay, he, he, okay. Dave. Okay. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you. Dave's second question, do you want the whole club playing like the first team or the style of play up to the respective coaches at that level? Right. I, I, no, I think, I think, I think you know, from the youth team, from the 18s and the below, you know, they, they, they're, they're learning their trade so they can play, you know, I mean, there's, they can play any formation they want. They've got to understand what, what, what qualities and what's needed to, what's needed for, to play in each formation. So I don't know whether they have a couple of months playing four four two, a couple of months playing four three three, a couple of months playing three five two. But they've got to be adapt. They've got to adapt, uh, adapt to know how to play every position. That's part of their, their their apprenticeship. They're scholars, but they're learning their game. So they've got to understand the different roles that they're gonna they're gonna find themselves in. So I'm not I'm not uh, I, don't, I don't demand that they play like that. I know they're looking to play a little bit like that, but. You know, they, they we, we need them to go on loan somewhere, and they could they could probably go on loan. Like I think I think hussein has gone to Hendon today, and I think they play they might play four four two, or so he'll be he'll be a fullback in that. So uh, you know, part of their education is playing different systems, coming up against different systems. So I, I won't make demands on them, but I just think that you know they they've got to by the time they get to me, or by the, or the time they move on and get to the level of level of first team football, they need to have a, a knowledge of. Uh, knowledge and being able to adapt to whatever the man whatever that manager wants to play okay uh, his, his third question is um given we play three five two why don't we use wingers as wing backs instead of full backs well um uh, it'd be interesting it'd be, it'd be, well I don't, I don't know how to say this or not but if you look back at the Swindon game 
Swindon game, the 4-3-3 three, three they played, they played their wingers high, up high, and, and, and on the outside shoulder of our three, defend, their three central defenders, which then meant that they were trying to force us back as wing-backs. So then them, full, them wing-backs had to defend as full-backs. Uh, we've got. I, I, I don't. I don't mind having. I don't mind having wingers. Uh, having wingers as wing backs, but sometimes you lose when you're playing away from home. You lose that defensive side to the game. They don't have that. They don't have them alarm bells defensively. So while you want to be attacking and through, there's come a time where you know at the moment we you know we're we're not good enough to dominate games from 90 minutes. And I don't know any team does it. You know even you know even the Man Cities are getting 70s and 80 percent, but it's out of a 10, 10, 20 percent that could damage them. So. You know, it, 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 it's at the moment it, again getting clean sheets. We've got, we've got. When they know their jobs. They know that first and foremost, it's a defensive. They cannot defend being become an attack. We look doing a lot of work on counter attacking. So it is, it is a possibility. But at the moment, I think you can play with wingers when you dominate teams and dominate a league and and, and really have key top top players in key areas. At the moment, uh, at the moment, you know, we're, we're I wouldn't say we're there, but we're aiming to get there. Okay. Yep, yeah, good. Um, now, question four. This is one that I would have thought would, would this would be quite high up there in a lot of people's list as to trying to find out from you, Glenn. And um, you know, I, I'm very intrigued in the answer to this one. But but uh, 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 stand by, buckle up. This is a good question. Where ideally do you see us finishing this season? <laughs> ideally, I see us finishing better than last season. Uh -huh. um, I, 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 we didn't finish I, I last know. season. Pardon? We didn't finish yeah, last yeah. season. Yeah, yeah, well, well. Oh, listen, when they pulled the plug, I was well happy. We was all, I think we was all very happy, so don't worry about that. We'll take that. Um, <laughs> I, I'm, I see, I, I, all, I don't want to put pressure on anybody. I thought I was going to do a points total, but I don't want to do that. I don't want to say we, you know, I just think that we're, we're just quietly confident. We're going about our jobs, being effective, and, 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 and not only, do, you know, an improvement, a points improvement total, a position improvement in last year, and individuals, you know, improving their game. So slowly, it's not going to happen overnight, but just like slowly, slowly, not being greedy, but just sort of grinding results out and getting to that point where, you know, the confidence takes over and all of a sudden we're, you know, we're, we, are, we are in a better place. So I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say a position, I'm not going to say a league position. Um, and I'm just going to, obviously, just, just we just got to improve season by season, probably a bit boring, but... I'm not going to put that pressure on myself or the players to, you know, to to suddenly yes, a big demand. And at the moment, you know, the, the demands are be better than last year. Okay, well that that that, that sounds good to me. I mean, I, I've got my idea of it. I, I'm 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 thinking top 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 half is what I'm thinking. That's it. <laughs> that, that's uh, love to see it. no pressure there, Glenn. No pressure. Um, right, uh, uh, this is an interesting one of my um I just 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 read it. Uh, I watched you one back the day down in brackets, in brackets, don't get upset at this bit. And on your day you were excellent. <laughs> um now you are a manager. Do you have any pre-match rituals? No, it's no, no, it's funny. It's I don't, I don't. All, all, you, all you do, all you can do is I just make sure that I've got, a, I've got, a, uh, you know, a, a, I've got a thing to work through weekly. I've got my plan to work through weekly. All I can do is come Friday uh, when I'm driving home. I've ticked every box. I've covered everything that I need to do as well with Dorsey and Robbo. We've covered every bit of work we need to do for this particular game, whether it's maintenance from the game before or mistakes from the game before and now we're going to play you know how we're going to you know how we're going to cause this team we're playing a problem and then when you come home on friday night uh you can sit there and have a nice beer or a glass of wine and and hopefully relax and thinking you know my job's done but it never is as soon as that over that white line you are helpless i don't i don't have i don't i don't have any 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 routines or anything like that uh i just uh, I, I just try and try and be comfortable in my mind that i've covered what i need to cover and then hopefully, hopefully things go well. Jolly good. So uh, you have you haven't got any pre-match rituals, no? Uh, no, 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 no. None at all. No. Are you sure. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I'm, uh, no, I don't think so. I know you just get routines. I know what I have to do in the morning. I know I have to do this. I know I have to do certain things, but that's part and parcel of it. So 
no, no, no. Just, just things that I need to do to make sure to help us be, be, uh, be ready and, and, and ready for that, that, that kick off. Right. Okay. Good. Really good. So there we are. Um, so, um, uh, here's another one. I've, I've heard this asked before, but it, it's interesting for people. Um, after matches, do you get to mix with other managers, or is this result dependent? No, it's, no. It's um, it's funny. We, we when we first when we went to when we went to Oxford in the Caribou Cup, we just said no. We and he and and, and he, 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 they, they'd stayed at, they'd stayed in the playoffs, and he said we don't we're not inviting anybody in. So sorry, so we didn't go in. Uh, and then when we went up to Fleetwood, then we when we went up to Fleetwood. Uh, Joe Barton invited us in when we had a beer, so we thought, "Oh, that's all right." So when we played Accrington, I like John Coleman, I like Jimmy Bell, I like the staff. So I said, "You know, we got some beers and, and got some peace." I said, "Come in and have a beer," and we had a beer. So uh, last week we also went in and had a drink with them. So that they were good as gold, um, Richie Wellens. So it's it's still yeah, it's still there. And win or lose, you can't you you can't pick and choose when you go in. You win, you go in. You lose, you go in. You lose, you congratulate them and and, and, and basically have a have a quick beer just to show your respect. But you, you don't, you don't. Uh, it's not, it's not uh, win dependent. It's it's if you get invited first and foremost, and we do. Everybody gets invited, and it's making sure that you know you take that hospitality, win or lose. You take it on the chin if you lose. Pat them on the back, and then and vice versa if if, if it's the, if it's the opposite. So it's good. I enjoy going in. I enjoy going in. Have a nice beer, and you know it's courtesy and, and respect for the for the for the other opposition. Jolly good. So that, that was all of Dave Hayes' questions. I hope you like the answers there, Dave. They were quite interesting questions, a couple of those. Really, really good. Um, having, said that, having said that, I wasn't invited into Gillingham. I wasn't invited into Gillingham after we beat 2-1 last year. So that's the only one I've not ever been invited in. <laughs> well, I'm sure that read really... What you read what you will into that. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, according to, to, to uh, that manager, that was the luckiest win of all time. And, yeah. uh, uh, and on another day, they would have beaten. I think, beat I, think them, I think both of them wins we beat last year were lucky. I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> Thanks for the six points. Phew. Right. Um, so this is from Chris Long. Um, first part of the question, for, or question one of his two. Um, I understand that lone players play a huge part in our squad, especially at League One level. But can I ask why we still don't have our own number one keeper yet? It is purely down to cost or some other reasons. Yeah, I think I think this year this year was a was a this year was a definite plan. We was going to get our own goalkeeper. We we're looking at it, and then when when um, when obviously when the, the season finished and the, the income finished, we finished for four months. And then we we was we wasn't in a, we wasn't in a good place, and uh, and and we, the money the money wasn't there for a permanent goalkeeper. So at, at this time it suited us. You know, they're not saying it's a cheaper cheaper option. It has saved us money. Uh, it saves us money than, sh than shelling out for a goalkeeper. So we, 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 we're in a better place now, obviously, with the, what you've been saying, Ivor, about the, the benches and the season tickets, the number of fundable season tickets. It's been absolutely fantastic. And that support has enabled us to get, you know, to get get a decent squad. But we signed, we signed uh, Connell really early because I thought it was important. We had a chance to do it. And it was just purely on at a finance time. I weren't sure what where we was going to be and how, how far down the road we was going to be with what squad. So it was important to get a goalkeeper in the building uh, early, uh, and uh, you know he's 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 getting better and better and doing really well. But it's something that's always been on the cards, and something you know maybe next summer, uh, maybe next summer maybe there won't be one available in January. But it's uh, you know uh, you know we are we are conscious that we know we probably need we need a goalkeeper. Again, we've got Nick Tans and Matt Cox Tans, sorry Tans. We've got Tans, so you know he's he's come in and played. He he still could be could develop. Hopefully he pushes Connell and Matt Cox underneath him. Uh, who's who's, uh, who's who's got his pro? Um, you know, you never know how they're going to develop. So uh, we'll you know we'll we'll watch it. We'll watch it. There's a good competition there, but um, it's something that we're conscious of and it's something that we will look to do. Okay, um, uh, I hope that's answered your your question, Chris. Um, part two or his second question, and this, this is one that might take you back to Plough Lane. Um, Will the new stadium have hot water for the visiting teams? <laughs> Actually, I'm going to add a bit to that. Do you think they should do? <laughs> well, I just I remember I don't know if you've seen it. I remember the, when we played West Ham, we did it. Me and Wally did an interview on um, on BT Sport, and Wally's answer to that was it, we just had a really ropey boiler, and no one had hot water, so we all had cold water. 
So uh, it's uh, it's 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 all it's all singing and dancing. I don't think we can get away with that now, not that we probably did, but uh, we want to make it as comfortable as possible for people and enjoy the experience as we're all going to. And then maybe hopefully the, the end result won't be as enjoyable. But uh, yeah, they, they were they were they were good days. They were good days, but it's a different different level now. And it's just the just, all I can say is the stadium. We can't wait. We cannot wait for that for that that that, that, that Doncaster game. Absolutely. Absolutely, it's just, just just a tragedy that we're not going to have everybody um, there for that. That is uh, that that's driving me personally absolutely mad. So um, we, we we are getting an awful lot of questions in. I'm I'm just having a little look here. We are up to uh, 24 um, questions come in, and I've still got loads here on the list. So we, what we're going to do is we we might have to limit some of the questions just a little bit, otherwise uh, um, we won't get through everyone. Um, although, you know, as long as you're happy to sit here, we, we, we'll, we'll keep going. We don't mind doing a bit of extra time tonight. We, we, we normally do. So maybe we'll even go straight through half time. We'll, we'll, we'll see how we feel, eh, Glyn? Um Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no problem. So the, the, the next question is um, from Michael Fisher. And I, I think some of these are going to be asked a, a, a couple of times. But they are, what are your a, a, ambitions and expectations for the club for this season? And, and next... With a return to Plough Lane next month and hopefully fans returning next year. So I think you've already answered a little bit of that question about how far we want to finish up the league and so on. But, you know, uh, I guess you've got some dreams that, that, that you might like to uh, see realised, Glenn. Well, I mean, the first one is making, the first one is coming on to playing in front of a packed full house. And like you said, I think then you're going to know then we are really home when, when everybody can share that. So that would probably be the, the immediate one. Can't wait for that day. Um, going back, we've, we've got four training, we've, we're just playing four training sessions uh, at, at Plough Lane before the first game. So we put them in, in the, we penciled them into the, the calendar. So that would be decent. And why, why, why I want that, I want to make sure that you know, while we're going back in, and, we, and it is a lovely stadium, and it's going to be nice and comfortable, I suppose, to opposition to come and, come and uh, play. We still got to try and make it a fortress. We, we picked up a lot of points last year at home and wasn't what, not so great away this year. Seems to be on the opposite foot. We're doing better away than home, so you know I think it's vitally important that you know we, we make sure that you know we, we pick up our fair share of points at home and we, we you know we we get that that make it a, make it a fortress and make sure that no, you know anyone comes they've got to work extremely hard and play really well to get anything from from Plough Lane. Exactly like it was in the old days. People used to come and didn't really like the experience and and you know and, and we used to run all over them. And I want to try and replicate that as much as possible. Just make it a difficult night or a difficult afternoon through whoever visits. And, and you know, when the fans back in and we're all there, we're all there together. You know, and, and, and us, I, I, that's that's what I want. You know, that's what I want straight away for this season and for next season. And, and the fans actually have to play a massive part in that, don't they, Glyn? By by by, yeah, we don't want to be a nasty atmosphere, but we want to be nice and uh, and lively and make sure that that, that people know. That, that they're coming into a, a, an arena that's passionate about their football and we really want to win. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. You know, and then we can all do that together. I mean, I, I, you, know, you look at Kings Meadow. The, 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 in the two years I've been at Kings Meadow, especially last year, we picked up. We've had some great nights there, and even before that. But I'm just going on my experience. The West Ham games, you know, the, the Ipswich draw, the, you know, beating Pompey, beating these teams. So you know, like I've said all along, we can beat anyone on our day, and we've just got to make sure that we consistently perform at home. Um, I think QPR at the moment it's like people turn up there like Accrington like Accrington booming they all of a sudden Accrington are playing football they come to QPR the pitch is magnificent the stadium's a great stadium I've always loved playing there myself so people you know people people enjoy enjoy playing there so we don't want we don't want that too much we don't want people to go and express themselves we want people to know that they've come and they've got a, they've got a fight on their ends nice like that so Glyn, uh, the, 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 the next question from um from Michael Fisher, I'm, I'm not going to read the whole thing out because it's quite a diatribe here. But 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 basically, cutting cutting his story short, um, he's asking when we're going to be able to compete with with the big boys in our division. Once we're back at Plough Lane, obviously you know, our crowds are going to go up. We're going to have a, a similar capacity to some of the the slightly bigger clubs, you know, maybe like Luton and clubs like that. You know, when are we going to be able to compete with them, and and how long is that going to take? Do you reckon? I think next season we've got the salary cap. So next season salary cap's at two point five. That means that all the all the, the Pompeys, the Sunderlands, you know, speaking to these speaking to these 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 big clubs, um, they they've got to get their house in order. And I think it's it's difficult. I spoke to the whole manager 
uh, this week and, and the salary cap's going to cause them a problem with the wages they pay. Anyone coming down from the championship is going to find it really, really difficult to suddenly cut to 2.5. So now, if they, when that's, that, that for, for us, that, that salary cap is, is music to our ears because all of a sudden now if we get our recruitment spot on, if we can get things right, then you know, then you know, then the the, the playing field is the playing field is is more is level, more level, and it gives us a real chance. Uh, and and hopefully, you know, hopefully we we with that the revenue builds more than two point five. So the extra revenue we can straight, you know, we can get maybe the training ground, spend some money on it, spend some money on the infrastructure. You know, the stadium's magnificent anyway. Now, so you know, maybe the the training ground around that and other bits and pieces, we can really really build a club and, and build each department and get it all singing and dancing. So we've got, the, we've got the infrastructure right, the departments right, the recruitment, the sports science, the medical side, everything around that. Then, then, then you've, got the, you've got that budget and everyone who's in that same budget, then, you know, then, you know, we, we, there's, there's down to us to get it right and, and, and our backers. So I think, I think next year we, we, we'll be looking to compete. If we, we can get, you know, wherever we can get, if we can get up to 2.5, you know, we're nowhere near that. But, you know, but they're, they're, the, thing, the point thing is they're being dragged down, they're being dragged back. So that's going to that's going to help us massively. Yeah. Okay. So great stuff. So the next question is from Adam Russell, um, and it's yeah we have a number of central midfielders at the club um, in Hartigan, Oxanen, Riley, Woodyard, Chislett, and Rudoni. What, what a midfield. Are, sorry. What a midfield. This is brilliant, isn't it? Um, what <laughs> role do you see each of these midfielders playing within your team? Wow. Well, I've got, well, I've got, so I've got, so basically you can look, you can double it up. We play, we play, we've been talking about the, uh, the formations, three, five, two, five, three, two, whatever it is, but there's three in midfield. So we've got, they've got, we double up. So Anthony Artigan and, and Yako are doubling up. You've got, you've got Callum and Callum at the moment, Callum and Ethan, but now Rudy's fit, Jack Rodoni. So say Callum and Rudy, the two left, left footers and Woody and Ethan Chislett. So, you know they, you know you you would be more than happy to play either of them pairings. I put I put them in pairs. Um, you know they've all got different qualities, and as I said before, you know they all bring something different. Some have got more attacking mindset, some are more defensive mindset. Um, so I, and I'm 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 quite happy at the moment to play to play anybody. And obviously Callum unfortunately left him found himself left out of the side for Ethan, and we won one nil. So you know so Ethan's got the shirt. So it's just a question of who's got the shirt. Can you perform? And it's not just on a Saturday. It's it's weekly in training. You know, we want to see a performance every week. You train that you train as you play, uh, and we're just trying to get them. You know, their ethics, that work ethic across the board, and you know they're competing for places. So um, you know, when they, as long as they stay fit, they're going to push each other to, to new levels. So you know, I'm, I'm I'm really happy with that midfield. Brilliant. Um, here's a question from Mike Stacy. Um, do you see us getting promoted in the years to come? And could we afford to be promoted if we did go up? Um, I, I could probably help answer a, a little bit of that and because that's the question that's been asked of the club um, from day one. I remember when, when we got into Ryman Premier, there were some people saying we couldn't afford to compete there. And you know, yesterday at times it was slightly difficult, but, but we did that. The same in Conference South and the same in the Conference. And you know, it's been the same ever, ever since we got into the league. So the, the answer is Wimbledon have always battled against the odds um, uh, on on the money front, uh, with with um, Plough Lane coming along and, and with a, a, a slight uh, realignment in football, I think that, that that whilst it won't be easy to compete when we do eventually get up to the championship, and I firmly believe we will do, um, we will do, uh, we, we, we we we'll get there. And if we have to be a yo-yo club for a while, then we'll be a yo-yo club until, until until we can settle. And then who knows where it goes from there. That, that's my simple answer, but Glyn might have something else to well, say. On I, I, it's a double-edged sword, that, that salary cap, the double-edged sword. While it's great, it gives us an, you know, an equal playing field against the Sunderlands and the Pommies I've already mentioned. You look last year, uh, you look last year that Charlton came back down, Luton and Barnsley got out of relegation the last game, the last game of the season. They were in that bottom three for ages. So the three that got promoted from last season uh, really struggled and there's no salary cap. So all my concern is that the salary caps in League One and League Two, there's no salary cap in the Championship. So if we're not careful, it's going to be a bigger gap than maybe the Championship to the Premier League because that jump's going to be massive. Now, like you say, Ivor, it might be you jump up, but you might not, you know, might not, might not stick, but you might jump up. But they've got, uh, hopefully, there's a, you know, hopefully there's a salary cap in that Championship that they're fighting it because they know that they can't, 
they can't put their salary cap in place because the, the Premier League uh, is, is crazy money in the Premier League. So we, well, we're not careful. If we're not careful, the only competitive reason would be League One, League Two, and then maybe the conference. Other than that, you know, it's going to be a big, a big jump. But you know, that's what we do. We overcome. We overcome hurdles. We overcome things. So if it's a yo-yo club for a while. We put things in place, and you get, you know, you you, you never say never. Uh, uh, you know, we will we will do it. We will do it. It's just making sure that we do it and we stick and we stay, and then we grow in there and grow and go again. But I don't think I think them days of of us, of, of you know the 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 the, uh, the crazy gang going from the fourth up to the the old first, which is the Premier League in four seasons, where it was. That's going to be a tough ask for anyone now. So you do it, but it's going to be bit by bit and slowly, and not probably not as as quickly as we'd all like. OK, um, the next question is from Edward, Edward Halls, um, and, and it's, um, sorry, my phone's ringing, oh dear. Um, right, uh, what's the situation with Will Nightingale? Is he just out of favour or not fully fit, recovering from injury, and are we likely to sign an additional centre-back anytime soon? Will, Will got, Will... Uh, got injured in training. We thought it was just a knock, and he played against uh, Orient in the EFL Trophy, and and he, he, he wasn't going away. So he had a scan. He wasn't involved at the weekend. He had a scan Friday. He's come back all clear. His bone bruising. He, he trained today, so he's probably had he's had a week out. He's trained today. Now the, the thing with Will, I spoke to Will, um, and now Will Will's missed a lot of football. I think he's near enough. I think I'm not sure it's, it's, it's near enough a year or coming up a year when he last played with a hip injury, and it was quite a nasty injury. That it took a while for him to get back. Now within that year, we've all grown. We've done some work with the, with the defenders, and and basically, you know, he's he's now finds himself fighting to fight for that shirt as we all do, um, as we as all the club, all the boys who are making sure that you know the standards are high, so he's got to fight for his place. So you know, it's just now we're looking at Will and having a chat and thinking if he if he if he can't actually get back in the time because he's missed so much football, it might be that we look, you know, that the, the the thought process was maybe let, loan him out loan him out till January, two and a half months in January, we'll get some a lot of games under his belt, come back January, we've got a fit will. So it's just a bit it's a bit concerning that he's missed a lot of football and, and he's he's to force his way in, he's got to play more football. There's no EFL trophies game, so he's got to try and get in front of in front of T, who was player of the year last year. Luke O'Neill's done great, so obviously made the goal the weekend. Dan Choker, you know there's 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 lots of lots of competition there. So you know, Will's Will's firmly, you know, Will's firmly in our plans. It's just getting the best for him and for us at, at the precise moment. Great stuff, thank you. So the the, um, the next question is from uh, Tim Probert, um, and uh, I think that is Tim from down Kent Way. I think if I've got that correct, Tim. I hope, I hope you're very well. Um, I've always wondered about how much input players have into tactics and style of play. Are they merely following orders of the management team, or do they have a say? No, we do. No, we we no, they have a say. I mean, listen, we 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 look we look at the opposition, we look at strengths and weaknesses. We go and deliver that back to the players. This is how we're going to play. This is what you've got to watch out for. This is how we're going to. This is how we're going to win the game. And then we sit down. Everyone's clear. And then after the game. Then we we uh, we do a, we do the preview before after the game we do the review and in the review um, the boys the boys can be as vocal as want we we encourage them to to answer we encourage them to quit there'd be clips going on and we ask them ask them for this clip what they thought of this clip and they they, they say they have their piece they say their piece they, they, they I want I want to get I want to get players who understand the game who are students of the game and you know like I say my Friday my work's done then it's fingers crossed as they go over the white line if I can produce players and help have bright players who can solve problems on the pitch and can see things happening on the pitch before we get to half time or before that their goals concede or when people are on top, then you know, then 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 I'll be a happy, happy manager. So it's something that we we encourage. Uh, they're in their groups. We have a defending group, we have midfield groups, we have attacking groups. We've got a thing called I spoke about it before, we have a platform called Huddle where I can clip on my iPad and send them to individual players and a comment and send the individual clips to uh, in clip, clips to for forwards to defenders, and they and it's like a WhatsApp group. They see the clip and they can comment back. So we throw it out there. So we're we're constantly doing that. We're constantly feeding that back, um, and and it, so it's it's just a learned environment that there's always something going on in the game. We always ask them to problem solve on the clips, problem solving there, 
and you know maybe 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 on the Friday like today and I did my work today and tomorrow I'm probably just making sure that I'm putting my point across and they understand then we'll deliver back and then we'll, we'll discuss it but now we, we want we want we want bright footballers who get it uh, and and it, it makes my job easier if everyone understands what the one thing about the team I played in for Wimbledon everyone knew their job I could go and play I could have probably played in goal and, and Lurch could have, and best could have been played left wing. That, that's how much we knew each other. So we could play in any position. We knew what was required. We knew what was required from our mate, our teammates. We knew what we had to do, and it, and it run itself. I think at the end, Dave Bassett would tell you that you know he he didn't have he didn't have to do as much because the work had been done and we fully got it and we understood it and we did it to a T. So that's the that's where I need to get with these. This is what I want to get to with with, with this group of players. Okay, that, 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 that's brilliant. Just, just, just a, a quick filler. I've just, just managed to check the, uh, the chat and we've, we've had one, you know, uh, you always get some bizarre questions that meet the manager, but this is one that, that, that I'm actually intrigued to know the answer, Glenn. I've got to be honest. It, it, it's, um, what's your favourite cheese? My favourite cheese? I love all, all cheese. No, blue cheese. Blue, it's got to be blue cheese. Blue. Yeah, but I'll, 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 blue cheese ball. If I go out, I'll have a cheese ball all day long. Love it. There you go. It's Any it, other stupid it, questions? Like that real strong one, yes. It'll be like blue cheese, yeah. We don't mind a couple of stupid questions. We really don't. No, yeah, yeah. No. yeah. We are we are now limiting people to, to, to one question at a time. And some of them have uh, um, sent in several. So, um, so Tim, you know, we've answered one of your questions of, of the two. And, uh, you know, if we get time, we'll, we'll try and double back. But uh, uh, it doesn't look like we're going to. So the next one is, is um, Jertsey Dabrowski. Um, evening, Jersey. Nice to uh, of you to send some questions in. Um, but but what we're going to do is ask your fourth question. Um, we think this is a, a really interesting one. Um, with no home advantage due to a lack of crowds, are we set up to attack more away from home? I think it's been strange. I think it's been. Yeah, I think we're more comfortable away from home. I don't know why, and I think teams come to us and they like I say, QPR is a great place to come and play. So they're probably enjoying that experience more than, more than we are our last our last two home games for sure um so it's 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 definitely different it, it gives you a chance i mean you know you, you go into fleetwood who, who were brilliant last year and have got a real experienced side you saw where they but they beat whole four one and we've gone up there and, and kept a clean sheet and won one nil so you know it, it, it's it's you you know you go you, you can you can win at home you can win away uh, and, it, and you, we're, we're a lot more confident in doing that we know how to set up to do that so yeah, it's 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 a, it's a good experience. The only experience that it lacks, and I've mentioned it before, is sharing it with the fans. We've got we've got Yako won his first game. I think was he when did he come on? Did he did he play at Fleetwood or the time before? But like yeah, yeah Yako's won games. Ryan Ryan Longman's won games. I've only just started their career. Dan Choke has won on his David kept a clean sheet. Connell Truman. This is where you this is where you, you go and share it with a fan. You share that away day experience, and it's it's it's, it's absolutely fantastic. That that is that that is missing massively missing, um, and that, that is a that is a big void. Um, so we need to get that back. But home and away, home and away. Yeah, I, I think it's very very even. There's no there's no the only probably advantage at home you got is if if teams are travelling down like Eccleston overnight stay. But even that sometimes is an enjoy, enjoyable experience. So it's it has it has changed a little bit. It has changed a little bit. But you know I'm 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 quite confident that, that you know our boys are now comfortable away from home. Which probably hasn't been the case, uh, hasn't been the case for probably a couple of years. Yeah, I, I can just see that lots of people are still reply uh, asking questions on the chat, where they need to ask on the Q and A, please. Um, and uh, but but if there are any funny ones, and I get to them, I'll, I'll I'll try and slip a few in because we 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 need to try and keep smiles on people's faces, don't we? But but let's let's keep on with the uh, the football ones. This is from Tim Hansen. Um, it's noticeable how much more frequently Luke O'Neill gets in advanced positions than the left-sided centre-back. Is that a deliberate tactic or do we just not have anyone who is as comfortable going forward, putting in crosses, etc., from the left centre-back? Yeah, good observation. Correct. We, we, we've not, we've not uh, been that comfortable. Dan, Dan, Choker, that, Dan Choker's got that left foot. We will get him to come and do it. Uh, like I say, you know, we've, we've been working on it for a while. So Luke and Shane have got a great relationship uh, down there. And l last year, Luke Luke assisted a lot of goals for for Joe Piggott, and he's done it again today. It was funny enough, like the Dunnington today, he's done it again at Swind uh, Swindon. We worked on it during the week. We spoke to Luke. He hasn't been getting in four positions, and it was a great uh, great weapon for us. So actually, actually, for him to come forward and do it again, 
uh, he, he steps forward. We, we aim to do it on the other side and we even want them centre halves to overlap, um, which we aren't quite getting. So it, it can be an expansive system. It's not just a defensive, people think it's a defensive system. It's not, it's an attacking system. It's getting overloads on the wide. But we definitely need more from the left hand side, and, and, and we, we will do. Dan will, Dan will grow into that. And we're even working on, you know, Paul Cannon by his left foot, but the balance isn't quite right yet. We are definitely, you know, definitely that, that outside right right side. Luke O'Neill is a bit more comfortable than we are on the left. We, we, we'll just have to keep, keep chipping away at that and we'll get better. Okay. So um, this one's from Peter Godfrey. Um, Appreciate that you might not want to answer this or single any one player out, but if money stroke budget was not an issue, out of all the players we released well, last season, um, if you could sign one back, who would it be and why? Well, I think that's unfair. To, to pick one out, it's unfair on the rest. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I was, I was pleased we was able to sign Shane. Shane, Shane had a clause in that we'd put in. So, um, you know, at that time, you know, we, we obviously triggered the clause. So that was... A great bit of work to put that clause in, so that was a good one. I mean, I've just it, 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 it's this, you know, the the seniors, the senior boys. It's probably like it's probably like Andy Bartram the year before. You don't want to see people like that go out the door. The Waggy going out the door. Uh, uh, Woody and Mitch. I mean, Waggy, Waggy for me. May, maybe maybe if I can put me on the line, Waggy for me is the one because he's great in the dressing room and he's he's great around the place. And he's I look at him and think he could. He could be end up. He could end up going into coaching. He's got that personality, and he's that right age where he's helping everybody. He's great with the kids. He was great. He was great, you know, around the place. So, you know, that was that was that was one that, that was disappointing. But you know, he's he's got fixed up at, at Forest Green, so he's you know he's he's still playing. Um, but you know, he, don't be surprised if he goes into uh, coaching, uh, stroke management. Yeah, totally agree with that. He's a great leader of men. Um, okay, this one is from Graham Philpot. What is it like being part of a backroom team in a Premier League and and and, and at international level? Um, and is there more or less pressure than managing a club in its own right and at, at an EFL level? And will Sparky be back, or does the pressure eventually burn you out? And that's a lot of questions, but we, we I want you to skim through them if you can, Glenn. Well, the the, the, the Premier League, the Premier League level, uh, the Premier League level. I was always sort of doing that 23s. Well, I was first team coach at Fulham when we finished eighth, so I, I was there. That the Premier League level was 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 fantastic. Like was fantastic. Everything about it, the way the way the way the clubs are run, the way that the way I've said to you before, like you know, the, the, we've got Michelin staff chefs in, 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 in you know in in the canteen. So the, the boys want for nothing, and it's great to have been at that level and seen it and had a taste for that. I mean, Man City was another level completely unbelievable there, uh, and to be part of that, to be, be part of that when when the when the, the, the people from Abu Dhabi took over, Sheikh Mansour, you know, that's an experience I'll never forget. But then when you come when you come down, when you come back down and come back to the AFL, international level again was good. And one of the one of the first, first things Mark you said to me about international level was that you're gonna get people from Man United, you're gonna get people from Arsenal, Man City, Chelsea. When they come, the training has got to be seamless. They don't know if they're rich. we've got to, we've got to deliver sessions and we've got to treat them as though they're still at their big clubs. They're still getting looked after properly. So that was a, that was a, that was a, 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 a thinking that because if you don't treat them properly, they won't want to want to come back again. They think sod that. I'm not going back to, to Wales or international. I'm staying at Man United. I'm staying at Man City. You get treated better. So that was that was a, that was a, an early learning curve in the in 2003. We, we started thinking like that, and I thought that's a great way to think. So we made that sure that everything was seamless. The sessions, everything they did was top draw. And now, when I've come back to when I've come back to Wimbledon, I've I've come I'm coming back with having seen and lived that life at the in the Premier League, and know that the standards that you know the standards that can be so much better if we just you know each department. All right, we, we we've got you know there's 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 problems with budgets. I get that, but we've got a budget. We're going to get the best we can out of that budget. We'll beg, steal, and borrow, but we'll get good people in place, and we'll get. And at the moment, I think that the departments are are thriving and we have good people in this club uh, right away through from as I said from the recruitment so you know I, I, I just want to make sure that you know I want to I want to I want to make sure that I can try and get as close I know I can't budget my but I want to get it close as I can to that Premier League experience and I want the boys to enjoy training the training's great the drills are great the sessions are great the travels the travels top draw we go on the train we get treated like kings 
first class on the way back. That that's all good, you know. So I, I want it to be an experience that they, they they're going to enjoy. And then again, the ice on the cake is playing at that stadium, so it's all it's all going in the right way. I'm de- I'm delighted how things have ter- have turned out and are turning out. And I just want to keep keep driving it forward and keep getting that keep getting them levels, keep 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 pushing them levels up. Okay, uh, look what what we've got now. We, we, we're going on to uh, we have uh, thirty five. 39 questions in, in, in the uh, Q&A now. Um, I don't know if anyone fancies a little break, but, but I'm, I'm happy to plough on. You happy to plough on for a little while? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're all okay. We're, 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 we, might, we might have to stop for five minutes in a little while because uh, I, I've, I've been drinking my juice all the way through this and uh, that, that might, might, might work its way through. But there you go. So, um, uh, and I can see one or two questions here that, that, that I'll have to abbreviate some of them because they're, they're, otherwise we, we will be here all night. But we're going to do our best to get through everybody's. But, but I think I would say uh, uh, 40 questions now. Let, 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 let's draw a line under that. Otherwise, uh, you'll still be here when kickoff comes on, on Saturday. We don't want that, do we? So, uh, so let's draw a line and, and no more questions in, please. We'll, we'll stop. See, so now we're up to 42 already. But there you go. Um, we'll, we'll have to draw a line under it somewhere. So... Uh, Timothy Carter has asked a question. I'm only going to ask you one part of it because we already answered the other bit. Um, what is the latest on Oli Palmer's fitness? So he's training. He's training. We, we, we'd hoping he was going to uh, play in the Orient game last week. But all we had on Tuesday, we had an in-house 11v11. 11 11. Uh, we, 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 not, not the lads that played at, at, um, not the lads that played at Swindon, but we got a group together and we had, we had a game. So he's a bit further down the line now you know he's he's chomping on a bit and, and he, he's he feels he's ready to go so he's he's not far away but he's, he's full training and, and and he's getting closer and closer and uh and the next one is from tony dolce um evening tony um hi glenn what's the main difference between the way the team is playing this season to last uh good question good question i was i i i, I felt last year uh, I felt last year we were in a false position. I felt last year that we we, we left a few wins out there, left a few points out there. Uh, I still felt that we we was we we could have we could have won uh, lots of games we were involved in, apart from the Oxford uh, away game, which we don't really want to talk about. Uh, we we never really we was in every game. So I just think we I just think probably pre-season has helped. New signers has helped. We've got. I think probably in the team at the moment is it, I mean, I'm right in counting probably five from last year or five or six. So there's 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 like probably half or over half of coming from of coming from from uh, other clubs uh, and have a different outlook. So it, it's 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 a nice balance. So I, I just think we was close to this, this these performances anyway. We were playing catch up. Remember we were we were we only had three points after ten games. No, that that was a catch up one. So we've not only did well at catch up. To get to get even out of it, so I think it's still a, it's still a positive performance last season. But this year, I think the starts the starts been been key, and uh, you know we've just got to keep the momentum and keep making sure that we're picking up points, and we just keep 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 building and keep building. So um, the new players have come in, have done great. The new signings have done great. We're more of a threat. I mean, Joe Piggott uh, is, is Joe Piggott's done fa- absolutely fantastic with his fitness and where he's at, as as all the other boys are. So. Um, yeah, it's just uh, it's it's just been it's just from pre season. You can get pre season. You just got a nice feel for the place, a nice feel for the group as a whole, um, and it's you know it's, it's it's ticking along nicely. Jolly good. So Corbin Williams has asked the next question. I'm going to abbreviate it a little bit for you, Glenn. Um, it's um, how does it how sorry start again? Working for a fan owned club. How does that differ from working for other clubs and? Do you think that, that running a club like this way is is sustainable? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I think so. I mean, I don't know how many fan-owned clubs have built a stadium like ours. So you know, straight away, there's a feather in our cap. Um, so I, I, I think it's sustainable. Like I say, the salary cap is going to make it even make even more so. Um, we, we don't need outside uh, outside investment. If, you know, we, we will. We will, we, you know, once that's once that once the, the stadium is up and running, the corporate side, the commercial side, everything about it, you know, we'll generate, we'll generate that money. So it's it's it's, it's fantastic, uh, and and it's it, it, I mean, playing it, up in the playing it in the Premier League or the budgets in the Premier League and what they get, what they give you, um, you know, it's this, it, it doesn't, I don't say lose a bit of soul, but you, you you're getting it and it's great, 
but you know here we know it's it's been worked for you know that it's you know it's the hard-earned cash of people's you know people that actually you know got the club and willing you to do well and giving us all their backing so it's a it's a much nicer feel and a more satisfying feel at, you know at Wimbledon at this precise moment it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a fantastic feeling Okay, this one is from uh, Stuart Stone. Um, Glenn, we're good at attacking teams, but a bit shabby defending. Why don't you keep the attacking threat on all game, like against Plymouth? We was all over them, and they was they were scared. Then you got Hartigan on, and we suddenly lost the threat and struggled to defend, and we panicked. Uh, this has happened against a few teams. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll leave you to, to talk about well, that's, but yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. We it, it's, it's we went for we went for this is this is again this is the probably going back to the, the boys, uh, you know, the, the, the boys discuss the, the tactics and discuss how they have to discuss. We went four two up, and I, after after scoring our fourth goal on the on the review, I played the next eighteen minutes. I said, sit down and watch this. The next, and far from kickoff, we weren't ready and I nearly got in and scored. We wasn't concentrating, weren't even looking at the ball. Then we didn't press. Then they scored their two goals, 4-4. Four, four. Then they pressed. So it's a sub, so I'm, uh, the question was, why would well, it subconscious? They thought the game was won. They thought the game was won and they could just relax. You can't relax. So it's, it's, it, it's subconsciously they took steps back. And now, ever since that, with the good thing about the good thing about the, uh, the 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 Fleetwood after that, and and the Swindon games, keeping clean sheets, so we don't take a step back. We know we never take a step back. Even if we're winning one nil, four nil, four two, we want to win five two. We want to win six till six. Sorry, six two. We ain't taking a step back. So it's just getting that mentality and getting a few leaders on that pitch to just say, "Oi, come on, we're still going. We're still going because we definitely." You know, not that I, it wasn't wasn't from the side, wasn't from wasn't from me or the staff. It, you could just see and sense it, and I played it back and showed them it, and they haven't got any answers. They haven't got the answers, so they don't really didn't realise something they did it. But we've pointed it out, we've seen it, and since then there's been an improvement. So we know we that, that's one of the mottos at the moment. We don't take a backward step for nobody. We're not dropping. We are we are going. Sometimes you've got to give credit to the opposition. Like I say, you know, the, the, the percentage wise, I know everyone looks at the stats now and in possession, out of possession, shots and things like that. I don't take too much notice of that. I'll just look at the shots for and shots on target. So we're not going to, we don't really have the lion's share of possession. So sometimes you've got to respect the opposition. You can't have it all your own way. We'll have spells and when we spells, we can open up teams. Now we just got to make sure when we defend, they don't open us up. And I feel that the last the last three games, I think that I felt I really feel that that's you know that's that's been good the way that we're not being opened up, but we have goals in us and and uh, but we're not going to have it all in our own terms. And sometimes you got to defend, and sometimes you got to pay respects or not pay respects, but respect that the opposition are going to go down and they're wounded and they and, and they need they need to get a goal back. So it's it, it, you know it's it ebbs and flows, I suppose. But you know we're we're consciously making sure that you know we. You know that 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 Plymouth one was was a big a big turning point for me. That was a massive a massive eye opener. Okay, nice one. Thank you very much. Um, now the next one. This is this is from Sean McLaughlin, uh, McLaughlin even, who I'm fairly sure must have been drinking quite heavily this evening because well he normally is by this time to be fair. So um, Sean's question is, it's very simple. This Glenn, diamond or Christmas tree. I think you should buy your missus diamonds, not Christmas trees. But anyway, go and answer the question. Diamonds or Christmas trees? It'll be diamonds, eh? Diamonds all day long. There you go. <laughs> hope that answers your question, Sean. Open up another can of cider, Great mate. Question. I think, Great question. I think, I, think, I think you need it. Hold on. He, he, he's, he's come back to me. Here. Uh, oh, he's just told me where to go. That is very nice. <laughs> nice one, Sean. <laughs> uh, this is from Mark Saunders. Um, Glyn. Are you still in contact with Wally? And if so, what's he up to? Well, he, I don't know if everybody might have seen this. He's taken a job in uh, he's taken a job in Jamaica. He's gone over there. Oh. I think called a Mount Mount Pleasant uh, Mount Pleasant Academy. So he's gone over there as, as t uh, technical director. He's building an academy. I think there's an investment over there of millions. And and he's uh, he's he's, in, he's I think he's interviewed some stuff, some some coaches over there, and they've all gone over. So I did it. Yeah, I did text him. I just asked him what the temperature was like in the pool, and how was the swim up bar, and was he all inclusive? So, uh, <laughs> uh, and he's—I'm uh, sure. 
you know, he, he, I don't know. I don't know whether he'd be disappointed he's not in football over here, but there's a big wide world out there, and, and, and now there's some great places to visit. And if football's paying you to go to these places and have an experience like that, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure um, he'll make the most of it in Jamaica. Yeah, not all. <laughs> this is from our oh dearest. Wow, what a touch. Uh, this is uh, from Mark Lewis. Um, now this season is your squad as opposed to one you inherited. Who do you see as the leaders in this young team? Um, we've got, we've got, we actually, we, we, what we do is we, we I, I form a leadership group. So I form a leadership group. So if there's anything that needs changing, anything that they're not happy with, anything that we can improve on, you know, we, we, we meet up. So the leadership group is set up with, with it. Oh, but you, I think the experienced boys. Um, so it's uh, it's Joe Piggott, it's uh, it's Woody, uh, it's Terrell, it's Will, it's Luke O'Neill, and it's Callum Riley. So there's six. So they they now we I give them carte blanche to run run the dressing room how they see fit. You know, making sure that their standards are adhered to in the gym, making sure that we you know we have levels of what we do. You know, I want them to police themselves. Uh, they they init- not, not so much fines, but they they dish out the, they dish out any any sort of fines or any punishments that they deem fit. Uh, and it's just making sure that, you know, if they need anything or we sit down, you know, we sit down if there's a problem or if, if they say we need to chat about, then we get we get the group in and we do that. And again, in the meetings we have, the leadership group come to the fore. Sometimes it's the same people speaking. You're trying to get the young ones to speak, but they don't. But, you know, that's that's how that's how we, we run things. That's how I do things. And, and um, you know, it's so, so that, that group there, uh, that group there are, are as important as the younger ones, but they, they you know, they, they can, they want, they want them to start running it and understanding what, what the, what the, you know, what the levels are and what the standards are and, and how we do things. And this is Wimbledon, by the way, and this is what, this is what we're about. That's the culture I'm trying to, trying to get in. Brilliant. Um, just, just before we go, go on to the, uh, the, the next question, and please, people that are putting up questions now, could, if you wouldn't mind just stopping putting questions up, we're not going to get through. Probably we've probably got another, you know, twenty five, maybe thirty, and that will get us up to the original forty we said we were on. But I don't, th- I don't think we're going to get get past all of these. Um, I just wanted to say, um, while everybody's still on, cause we've got two hundred thirty eight participants at the moment, which is a, a, a jolly good uh, turnout. And I know there's people that are work, watching together, families and and twos and threes watching this. So a lot of people are watching this. Uh, I, I want to say a big thank you to uh, Hannah. Um, Hannah Kitcher and Graham Stacey for putting this together and doing the work to to make this happen. Um, I think it's an absolutely excellent format and I'm really, really grateful for you putting that together because uh, we enjoy our meeting the manager evenings and although there's nothing quite like a live audience, this isn't a bad way of doing it and the Glyn uh, Glyn's earning his call tonight. So I'm going to give you a, a, a round of applause and everyone else can give you a virtual round of applause. So thank you thank very you much. Man. Thank you, Graham. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Hannah, yeah, thank you. So, um, right, uh, next one, Michael Stone. Um, Glyn, was it more difficult signing players this season and did you miss out on any players you would have liked at the club? Um, it, it hasn't, it's funny, it's, it, I'm comparing it to January. It, it hasn't been, it hasn't been that, that hard. What, what's hard now is there's, there's a couple now, when you, when, you get, when you get into now this end, I liken it to January. It's like a domino effect. You're, you're after players, but they won't they they won't let them go unless they get one in. So it's one in, one out, one in, one out. Now we're getting down to the, the nitty gritty. I found this last two weeks quite quite difficult thinking one in one to drop, but you you, you got to be patient. So the, the the early signs I was delighted to do our work early. I think that's been key, especially as you know we've had such a lot. We had a seven and a half week preseason, and the majority of players were in. And working on 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 working on the shape and how we wanted to play, so that was great. Um, now you're just probably trying to put maybe maybe there's one or two that, that might come that might come over the next 24 hours. It's probably looking doubtful now, which I'm a little bit disappointed about because we've been working hard on on one. Um, but it's 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 only it's only the, the, this end now. This this end now reminds me of January. January was a very very frustrating month um, because we did we you know we was after some and couldn't get it and. People were priced and said, you know, they were they owed you to ransom, which we weren't prepared to pay, which has been well, well documented. So, uh, you know, it's been it's been an enjoyable one, and and I'm you know I'm really pleased with I'm really pleased with the recruitment and the, the players we've got in it. They they fitted in fantastically, and and they know they know they're doing well on the pitch as well. 
cool. So, um, brilliant, thank you. The next one is Matthew Perriam. Um, Congratulations, oh, we moved it around, that's brilliant. Right, congratulations on the solid start to the season, Glenn. Should we be concerned, though, at all about how quickly we're sometimes giving away possession so far this season? Yeah, again, again, this was uh, this is in the review. We could have beat Swindon, not being greedy, but two would have been two would have been comfortable. Three, I'm being greedy. Three and four, we got into some fantastic positions, and then we never quite got that that pass, or never quite found the right pass, or the touch wasn't right, or the decision of that pass was wrong. So that is something that that is something that again we spoke about, we've worked on, we've seen it. We did some counter attacking this week. Um, just to purely say that we're getting these positions, we've got to be more ruthless, and we weren't. And and while while the feedback was from the boys that we were quite comfortable at one nil, you can't rely. The referee could give anything. It could be a ricochet on goal. Anything could happen in football. So it had been an injustice in my my thinking that for us to not to take all three points at Swindon. But you know, on the other side of it, we still got to try and get that killer instinct in the boys to go for the jugular. You know, we want to get we want to get a few more goals. So it's 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 something that we we're, we're aware of, and obviously you picked up on it. So that's a great point, and it's something that we hope to improve, and it's something we 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 are working on. Good. So uh, this is from Spike Godding. Good evening, Spike. Um, hi, Glenn. I'm loving the pressing from the front that Pigs and Longman seem to be doing this season. We'll be looking to play the same once Ollie Palmer is fit. Yeah, yeah. Well, listen, we we uh, this is uh, this is this is one of the reasons. So, Ollie's got to be hundred percent fit, get himself in. We 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 you know we, this is the way we've got a style of play. This is how we, we, the boys know what they're doing in possession, out of possession. There's a, a clear path. There's a clear pathway. They know what the expectation levels are, and and where there's times to press, times to drop, and times to just consolidate. It's just getting that mix right and getting the boys to understand that, which is what I already spoke about. So we we we. Uh, you know, if we can, you know, against against Plymouth, I think was it Ryan Ryan uh, Ryan Longman's goal was where Pigs took it off the centre half and played him in. So we'll continue to do that and uh, hopefully continue to get chances and score from that position. Brilliant. Next one is um, from Ian Baker. Is the QPR pitch a similar size to the new pitch? It is two meters less in length, same width, and it's uh, it's just two meters. Uh, so yeah, two meters less. So. Um, what we did, what we decided with the with the pitch at, at um, the pitch at Plough Lane, we wanted to. I wanted to get the same size as Kings Meadow. Uh, the training ground pitches are the same size as Kings Meadow. We've got years of data, GPS, everything on Kings Meadow pitch. So you know, I, I felt that we was comfortable in it. In, in my time here, it's been it's been a it's been a great ground for us. We've had a lot of success there. So the pitch size will be exactly the same as that. And to be fair, you know, apart from that, apart from a metre, and that'd be it'd be two metres longer. You know, it's it's the width is fine. The width is the same. We work hard. We're working harder on set pieces, corners, and fruit and thrown. So that'd be great. It'll just be it'll be seamless when we go back there. So uh, uh, yeah, it's um, it's 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 very very similar, and that, that's that's been that's been a key key reason probably one of them to go down there. Okay. So uh, next question is for Mark Saunders. Um, cool, I thought that was a beer for a minute, Glenn. I thought it was a beer. Anyway, no, uh, a bit of sponsorship. <laughs> bit of sponsorship. Yeah. Yes. Um, a couple of times we've leaked a couple of, of goals around half time. Is this due to fatigue or loss of concentration? Uh, well, the, the two goals that come to mind are the, the, the 40, 41st and 44th minute of, of Accrington, where one was one was a silly free kick to give away, uh, a, 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 a not really defended free kick. There wasn't a great free kick. It ends up in our goal. The next one was a, was a was a cutback that gone through two sets of legs and gone in the far corner, which the goal was unsighted. So I would say they're scrappy goals. Another day they might hit your legs. Another day they weren't even they weren't even good goals. So they were frustrating goals. Um, it might so they always say that there's goals towards the end of half time and the end and the end of the game. There's always there's always goals there. Maybe it's a bit of fatigue, um, but again, you know, it's uh, we, we, they're, they're the two that stand out. Uh, that really, really disappointed me because they didn't earn them, and we had bodies around. We wasn't caught out or anything. We just didn't, we didn't react quick enough. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's you know, that, but the boys are fit. I'm quite happy with the fitness. It was a worry to begin with when you when you think that we'd have four months off, and then straight away we're playing, can't we're playing uh, Charlton, we're playing Oxford, we're playing uh, Fleetwood, who all, all were in the playoffs, all were playing. 
So I'm thinking now, you know, did we did we do did we do the right thing? Even you know, we're playing wholesome. Did we do the right thing by having four months off? Would we, would we be not as fresh as them? And we've turned out that I'm I'm more than happy where we are fitness wise compared to other teams. So our, our stats are good. You know, we always again we give them targets. We're pushing the physical stats up. So yeah, it might be it might be a fatigue one. It might be more of a concentration thing. But it's something that uh, you know, it's something that again that, that you, you hope doesn't happen. But it happens all over the world in all sorts of countries. But them two goals that spring to mind were were awful to concede and ultimately cost us the game. Okay, the next question. This is this this is one of my favourite questions so far tonight because it's it's historical and uh, and 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 I, I I like this sort of thing. So, uh, back in your Wimbledon playing days, if you could choose one player to play for you, who would it be and why? <laughs> one player from the boys you played with. From Wimbledon, obviously. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a great question. I want to say, well say, well say a couple. I mean, the two, the two, the two that stand out. Well, what? Well, I mean, <laughs> the two that stand out for me was Ni Nigel Winterburn and, and Dennis Wise. Uh, they were the two, and if you think about it, they were the two that probably went on and got the most, you know, the most, the medals and gone and got the titles and the cups and every bits and pieces like that. So, you know, they, they were top draw. My understanding with Nigel Winterburn, we played together. He was absolutely fantastic. The only one I'd probably plump for Wisey because he would aggravate, he would, he would start fighting in an empty room. Uh, and he, he, like, if he was on it or if he weren't on it, he was a pest and he used to drive people mad. So I, 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 won't, I wouldn't mind a team of mine driving people mad like that. So I think it would be Wisey. Good choice. Right. Um, the next question from Callum McGarry. Um, Clean. Before now, your coaching career was with or as first team coach. Did the Wimbledon opportunity change your plans, or had you always had a longer term objective to manage a first team? Of course, they don't. Callum, you know, Glyn did manage uh, Barnsley, but I'm sure he'll tell you that yeah. in a second. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I've gone, yeah, I've gone to Barnsley, uh, lost my job, and then, and then obviously went, was then, then teamed up with Mark Hughes and stayed with Mark Hughes for the next, I think it might have been about 14, 15 years or whatever it was, I think, I was trying to think. Uh, so then, then the, the, the first team thing, apart from the first team one at, at Fulham's first team coach, I was always on the periphery of it and, ne and never really got that chance. I had, I had a couple of interviews. Uh, I, I, did think, I did think that it was something I wanted to do, especially after the Barnes experience. I enjoyed it. I was young then. I was 39 when I got that job and I took that on. Uh, and my last game, or my second to last game, was on my 40th birthday. So that's, 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 so that was a real baptism of fire. So uh, uh, when I get to when I left Stoke, you get to this age, and, and then you think, well, is it going to pass you by? Is it going to pass you by? But you know, it's um, it's to come to actually get the opportunity to come back and work work here. You know, was with Wally when I, when he phoned me and gave me the opportunity. You know, that it was too it was too good to turn down. Um, and obviously, you know, we all know about Wally. It's a shame because it was it was I was enjoying it, I enjoying it, uh, and it was it was a shame what happened to Wally, but. You know, uh, it's, it's, it's put me into this position and I've got him to thank, thank for, it, for bringing me in the first place. So it's, this is something that, looking at, looking at the age I'm at, probably, yeah, have I, have, I missed out? have I missed out not doing this sooner? Yeah, I think I have. But I've also, you know, don't take anything away from the clubs I have worked at because it's, it's been enjoyable. I've enjoyed it. You know, I've enjoyed every club I've worked for different reasons and, and I've had a ball and I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying it. This, this, but this at the moment tops everything. Okay, I'm now going to make it. People that I know that have already asked a question, I'm I'm going to drop out their questions because we've got to go into turbo here, Glenn. Because yeah, we 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 we're going to have done 90 minutes soon. You know, at, at nine o'clock, we, we without half time, but we will do a bit of extra time and everything. But we're going to go into turbo. So I'm really sorry, those of you that already asked a question. If I remember that you've asked a question, I'm not going to ask your second question. So I'm really sorry there. Um, so here we go, Stuart Deacons. Um, so, so this is the first question from Stu. Have you had any say in the design and equipment of the home dressing room at, at, at Plough Lane? And if so, what did you add or remove? Well, funny enough, uh, we was there. When was we there? When was we there? Either Tuesday, last Tuesday, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I was there last Tuesday. Yeah, we went we went down last Tuesday, and it's like moving into a new. It's like going into a new house where you're fitting, you're fitting the fittings and the carpets and the curtains and. Uh, and bits and pieces. So we're looking to went into went into the the, 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 room, the dressing room where the lockers are going to be. Just talk about where the television is going to be, where the signage is going to be. I've got the 
I've got the plans, so I'm having some things drawn up for some, you know, just for some, um, uh, what do you call it, motivational stuff, some of the messages we need to give them. Gone in, we've gone into the physio room, gone into the manager's room, he's going to find out that they have a table for four. So I think, well, there's a few more staff than that, so we've, hopefully the table's gone, going to get some settees in there, making sure there's a well-stocked fridge. So it's really exciting actually going in and looking like buying a new build and putting, where you, putting your stamp on it. So we have had a say in it, and uh, we have had a say in it. And again, uh, it's 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 ongoing. There's the entrance. There's lots of things we can we can put our mark on. There's lots of things that, that we that we've got to we've got to put right and make sure make sure they are right. But it's uh, the dressing rooms dressing rooms are looking good, uh, and you know hopefully hopefully we do it right and get the right get the right get the right signage in and get it right up. It'd be a fantastic place, a fantastic environment, and a winning environment. Lovely. Right, this is from um, Ali McGarry, or Alistair McGarry, sorry. Um, what caused the change of approach for Accrington? We seem to set up at home to not lose rather than to win. No, we, we, no, we, we, no, we didn't. We're well, so we, probably apparent we did. No, it, it was such a disappointing, such a flat performance that, it, that uh, uh, it was probably the most disappointing 45 minutes since I've been in. And I absolutely, at half time, yeah, it was, it, it, I couldn't believe some of the things that were happening and I couldn't believe some of the stuff that, that was going on so you know we, 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 we gave ourselves a lot too much to do and I felt the second half we, we bossed it without really looking like we was going to get that equaliser or that win but we, we didn't set up like that we, 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 there was a few things that didn't happen and a few things that I think if they don't if they don't work if, if we do try something that doesn't work then we thought oh we don't try that again Instead of knowing that, you know, it might not work first time, but if you, you work second time, it might only work 70% of the time, but that 70% is going to get you to win. You can't ever have it all, like I say, you can't, it won't work all the time. It's like your passing might be off, you might miss one pass, but the next pass, you keep trying that pass. We didn't, we sort of went on the back, we went on the back foot a little bit, and we wasn't as, we wasn't as, you know, after, I wasn't as confident. It was saying, I couldn't put my foot, it, it was, it was, it was an horrible 45 minutes for me. And an horrible experience after as well. That ruined my wig, and that's the worst I've felt since I've been back. And I don't normally feel like that. So that was definitely an opportunity missed, and definitely uh, look, look, we got it. We got it wrong, and we didn't do what we set out to do. That's probably the most disappointing thing. If we had, you know, I think we could have been set in now with more points. Nice. So this one is from Richard Birch. Um, I like the way we are looking this season, playing expansively and generally entertaining the fans whilst being pragmatic away from home. But do you see three centre mids, three centre mids as your best three to start regularly, or will you keep rotating throughout the season? I think we'll. I think we'll rotate until you know there's 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 three from six, so it might be a little rotational period until until Yeti. There might be three that actually actually step up and think, well, actually these are the three. Um, and again, Callum Callum started pre-season was great, started the season well. Unfortunately, he found himself out. The team was already mentioned, so. You know, now he's he's got to fight his way back in, and 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 they, they've got the shirts. So you know, I I think I like the three because I like to dominate or dominate midfield. And every time you play in this division, everyone seems to have three midfielders in there. So I don't want to be outnumbered in there because you will get you will get punished. And I've got three good players in there, and, and three that will grow. Um, and you know, and, and I think they'll 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 they'll, they'll I think Yako Yako will get better and better. And he will make us part. He will play a little bit more because he's a good footballer, the kid. And he, he he probably got a little bit lost in his first game, done great in his second game. And I think he will he will improve and improve. So you know, again, again, it's you know, but also Anthony Hartigan. I know, I know, I know. I've seen sometimes that people give him an hard time, but he's he's a great kid. He's he, he's a great kid. He's he's fit. He's strong. Uh, he, he's a good footballer. The kid's a good footballer. So you know, even even with Anthony will go in there and, 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 and churn out the same sort of same sort of uh, performances. So yeah, there's 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 six three to choose from six. Um, Ethan's a different animal. He, he's got that attacking trip scored on his debut after I don't know ten fifteen seconds, which was brilliant for him. And uh, you know he's he's he'll grow as well. So yeah, I'm I'm I'm, I'm and he said he, he happy with the squad and happy with the start, and I I, I, I am as well. Right, so uh, this one is from the, the Andy Ramsden, and it's Hi Glenn. Give, now, this is a question that I'm, uh, I'm, I'm surprised it's taken this long to come uh, to the fore, but Hi Glenn, given how the league is shaping up this season, 
who do you see as the four weakest teams in the league? And then again, the strongest teams. It's, at the moment, at the moment, like, I've, I've touched on it before. Like we, at end of normally end of the season, you finish say fifth of May, for example, and then you come back. You come back six and a half weeks before, so five and a half weeks before the season starts. Everybody finishes the same time. Everybody starts the same time. So it's 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 at the moment everyone's everybody's different. Everybody's different. No one's finished at that time. Like I say, the, the championship carried on plans. So there's three teams that have carried on plan. You've got the four teams that were in the playoffs. Uh, so they've carried on plan. And you also you've got we didn't know we didn't know when pre we didn't know when the season was going to start. So we we plotted we we said we're going to start there if the season starts there. Doncaster they've done brilliant. They started on the first of August. So they literally had, had, the, had the, small, the, the shortest pre-season anyone's ever had. So we spoke to Swindon. Swindon started late. He's got, he, had, he said he had, about, he had about 10 injuries. He said, we're gonna, he said everyone's going to be injured this year. So it's, it's just, I think it will settle down. It will settle down, hopefully, maybe, maybe let me get this next month. This, this month, next month, this month's coming with the away games, with, with all the midweek games, it's going to be a tough ask. And then we'll get a better picture of where we are. But I think after this month, October, November, maybe Christmas, when it settles down, we'll see. We'll see. We'll get a better view because I don't know where. It's hard to say where we're at. We're not all at the same starting point, and we haven't been all at the same finishing point. So that's why it's, it's a, that's why I'm pleased that we have, we've got some points on the board. And if we continue Saturday and get some more points and carry on, then you know we'll just build a bit of momentum. But uh, to an honest answer. I, I, I don't know. You know the ones. You know the ones who financially are struggling. We've got an idea of them, uh, and you always sort of say that ones with a lower budget end up at the bottom of the league. So you know that that that's that's normally as it is. But we just got to make sure that um, we just got to see how we go. And once it once we get to Christmas, you might have a better a better picture, maybe a, a clearer picture of, of of where we are. It's a, it's a funny season to call. I hope that makes sense. Yeah. So so yeah, you haven't really answered the question, but we'll let you away with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not maybe not just said I don't I don't know that. Okay. Right, this is, uh, I've missed one from Matthew Harwood, um who's a, a great lad. Um the team seemed fitter this season. I know we have a new fitness coach, but have we upped the intensity or changed how we approach training? The players also seem quite a close knit group. Um how have you bonded the team so quickly? Well, um, we 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 decided we just because of the well. If we go back to that, we go back to that that March when the season was the season, when it was when it was like, uh, suspended or postponed, or whatever it was. We weren't sure where we was going to come back. So the all the boys were all the boys were on lockdown. All the boys were staying away, and we gave them. We were on Zoom. We were on Huddle. We had all these meetings. We were on Strava. A lot of the, a lot of people would know what Strava is. A lot of the boys were doing their their work on Strava. All in their groups. So we continued to work. Uh, and I was saying, you've got to keep them fit because the, the, the EFL could say, you're back Monday, you're playing Saturday. So I was concerned about that. Then we got a message from the EFL saying, or a, a memo saying, you can stand the boys down, they don't do the training anymore. We won't be starting anytime soon. But I said, no, 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 we're carrying on. I don't, we're carrying on. We're not going to take any chances. The fact that we were in, you know, we're in a position we were in, we got to make sure that when we start, we hit the ground running and we're, so we carried on working. And the credit to the boys, a few of them bought bikes, a few of them on road bikes, a few of them were working and they, and they really, really, I mean, I don't know, maybe it's boredom or whatever, but they really you know, put it in and they, 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 their work ethic in lockdown was magnificent. Then when we decided to come back straight away, the first thing you do is do the body fats and all the body fats were, were, were improvement on last year. And that's sort of a four month fluff and that's unbelievable. So we knew that they was in a good place. We went for a longer pre-season. We went for a seven and a half week pre-season purely from the fact that after having such a long break of four months, we didn't want to lose any injuries. We didn't want to lose any, come back too much and cram too much in. People are going to break down. So we did a slow, a slow burner, a slow burner and got fitter and fitter and fitter. And everyone got through, everyone got through pre-season. And I think our, our attendance, our attendance in training is in the high 90s or mid 90s. So it's 90% of attendance. So that is, that is phenomenal. So hats off, you know, I've already said to, to Dougie, to Chris, uh, to everybody, and the boys themselves, and uh, and because of that, you know, we're we're reaping the rewards, and that's what I'm saying. I, we, we'll just see when everyone catches up. If we're a little bit in front, I think maybe we might be off. If we've done it quite well, I'm, I'm pleased with what we've decided and how we've gone about it. So if we're in front, see how the others catch up. 
if we're in a, I, I, every game we've been in, involved in, every game we've been involved in, I've been delighted with our fitness. Okay, um, the next one is actually, uh, I, I, I'm breaking the rules here. It's a question for me, so I'm going to answer it, even though it's Stuart Stone and he's already had a, a question answered. But either, are we going to have a major grand opening ceremony for the first game all fans are allowed back? Well, um, I think I can say that as long as I've got breath in me, we will make that one hell of an occasion, Stuart. I, I think it's absolutely uh, vital that, that, that to me, um, this stadium is not opening on, on the... Uh, 3rd of November. We're starting to play football there and we're going to be there and, and we'll all be proud of that 100% as we all will be. But but to me, it won't be open and it will never be open until um, have everybody absolutely there and uh, you know it's sickening that we can't do that. So, so as far as I'm concerned, that will be something to celebrate and yes, I hope yeah. we do it in grand style. I'm sure Plim wants that as Agreed. well. Agree, 100%. Yeah, 100%. Good. This is from Peter Schilling. Um, what has the new CEO brought to the club? Watched his, his, ex, watched his extended interview and he seems a very down-to-earth man. Well, that's one for you, Ivy. You're, you're on the ball with him. Well, he, he's brought lots to the club. You know, he's very dynamic, um, very go-ahead, modern way of doing things. Um, and so, yes, he has. And we are rushing now, so I'm going to do this very quickly. He is very down-to-earth and he can be, he's extremely approachable. So um, I, I suggest that, that everybody approaches him on a more regular basis. <laughs> there you go. Good luck with that, Joe. Um, right, this is um, from Nick Prowse. Uh, with Will potentially going out on loan, does that mean Piggy is now the captain for this season, Gaffer? Oh, right, OK. Yeah he's, got, yeah, he's got the armband. I mean, Will's a, Will's a club captain. Will's, you know, Will's great around the place. He's, he's tremendous. He does, you know, he, as everyone knows, everyone loves Will. He's brilliant around the place. So... Pigs up, pig on on the pitch. He's got the armband, yeah. But as I spoke about the leadership group. I don't know if you was there when I spoke the leadership group. But you know, it's, it, we want we do not just one captain or one responsible. You know, we want a few leaders in there. So anybody's capable of wearing that armband, and and we just want to make sure that that you know everyone's got that mentality. So um, you know, I'm not saying you know whether Will goes, Will goes out or not. I mean, that's that's our mindset at the moment. Whether you know, I'm more than happy if he doesn't. I'm more than happy if he doesn't. But they just think that he needs to he needs to be playing football, Will, to get the best out of him and get him back up the speed to be, you know, to get him back in the team. Okay. So now now we now we're in extra time. We've got to go into absolute turbo here. So so we we that's what we're gonna do. So this is from Mark Penfold. Does Glenn think that Joe Pickett has gained a reputation with refs of going down too often and too easily looking for free kicks? Yes or no? Uh yes, two seasons ago, maybe maybe eighteen months ago, no now. Right, okay. It this doesn't is, go down now. No, this is from Steve Leahy. Lee, Lee, sorry if I got that wrong. Hi, chaps. Having said and back this year, where does it leave um, Nesta Guinness Walker and Paul Osu? Delighted to have Seds back, by the way. Sorry, Ivor, I'm a proper technophobe. Wouldn't have thought I was a teacher. <laughs> well done, Steve. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, and, uh, Paul, and, uh, Paul, Osu, Paul Osu, again, we're looking at the possibility to get, to get him out on loan. I think, you know, there's two, two prime nets, two, two competitions, Nesta and, and Seds, great, great for each other. Um, and Paul Osu, another young boy who's done brilliant, played 20 odd games for the first team level at such a young age. Uh, and we've got to continue his development. So, you know, we're, we're, if, if I get a chance to, to loan him out, uh, you know, we'll, we will try. Okay, this is a, a two, two simple uh, uh, yeses or noes. Adam Russell, transfer deadline day tomorrow. Are we likely to see any departures? If we do, we're getting one in. <laughs> any arrivals? If we, look, if we get one out, we'll get one in. There you go. Right. <laughs> oh, mysterious. I love that. Right, this is from Paul Witham. Uh, the recruitment from Brentford and Brighton over, oh, yeah, that moved. over the last um, couple of seasons has been fantastic. Do we now have strong relationships with these clubs to, to lean on them for future loans? And were you involved in building these relationships or who do you have to thank for this? So, simple question first. Do we, you know, do we now have a strong relationship with those clubs? Yes. Good, there we are. And, and, and did you have a part in building that relationship? Uh, well, the only part I played is we're giving them minutes. If we give young boys, if we give young boys games and minutes, and they, if we get these these young lads come in, the reputation we, we builds up for us, uh, and and they, we're to be the go-to team. I think we're. I mean, there's a stat I saw the other day. We're we're in the we're top. If we're not at the top, we're top three or four 
of loan clubs that that, benefit, that the boys will come and benefit playing for us. So if people do their own work and see the minutes that they are playing, then you know, we would uh, yeah we would um, we, we've got to be we've, we've got to be uh, the go-to club. But did, did did you actually you have a relationship with with, with Brentford and, and and these guys? Yeah, we've got a relationship with them. It starts it starts yeah with Joe Joe has uh, doors yes we all have yeah. So that, I mean I think it's down to Joe that Brentford one by the way. Um, okay. So that's that's one for Joe. Uh, you know the other, the other. We, 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 we've all got. It's funny because we've all. We, we know you're doing your due diligence on the players. Everyone knows someone at somewhere. So we've all, we've all got our little, our little relationships. But to be fair, credit Joe. I think mean, Joe will give the broker one to Joe. That's Joe's. So it's been brilliant. Right. Okay. So now we're going on to Connor Mitchell. Um, now, can you share a bit about your relationship with the club before returning as assistant manager? Um, uh, any reflections on the rebirth of the club when the proverbial hit the fan? So I know we saw you several times, Glenn. So it's really you did have a relationship, didn't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. I could come. I mean, you know, probably living, living where I was living, and uh, the life up north, it probably. But whenever I could, or whenever I could, or I was down, yeah, either was got on the phone to either. He'd always sort me out a ticket. So we uh, came down to Kings Meadow a few times and saw saw the boys and that. So it was yeah, it was always. And it's one you watch, one we watch from afar. So. Uh, you know, once once you once you once you've been at this club, you, you all know you, it touches you, and and and, the, and and even if you're on loan, if you've been here, whatever it is, this club is special. So yeah, I, I did I did uh, I did carry on and, and come whenever I could. Although uh, I'm a I'm a convert, I'm a northerner now, really. I'm not so much now. I'm back down. Right. So anonymous attendee. Oh dear, that's 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 poor being an anonymous attendee. Are there are there any truth in the rumours around Joe Piggott signing for bigger clubs? No. No, there you go. Right. Ian Baker. It appears... Oh, I think you've already had a question in, but never mind, too late now. It appears that we seem to let in a number of goals from corners. Or... I don't know what... Corners or... No. Right. Callum Watson. You can answer... Is that true, Glenn? Yes or no? Well, corners? Yeah. I put a question back there. When was the last time we, we did one from a corner? I'm trying to think. Right. OK, we've, we've got to move on. Glenn. Uh, this is from Callum Watson. Good evening, Callum. Um, Glenn, who is the best player you played with or against? Oh, the guy got long for it. Oh, was, was that Plymouth? Sure thing, that was a free kick. That weren't a corner. Well, that, yeah, so give the Plymouth one as a corner, yeah. I'll, I'll say that. that. A corner and, 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 and Shane won the ball and give it back to him. So I'm not, that's not a corner. Right, okay. What about I don't think so anyway, but I'm going to think about that. But I don't, to be fair, there were so, so many, I, I can't think off the top of my head. I, was, uh, I mean, I, I, I probably, I would say maybe Ian Rush if it's on me, but but maybe I, I can't, I can't think of that one. That that best player I played with or against? No, nah, not Nigel Winterburn, Dennis Wise. No, no, this I love them, but I, I, I did love them, but I, 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 I'm, I'm sure I played with better than that with, with Wales and against people and against people. I don't know, I don't know name drop, but I did name drop today, but I, I was in, I played Wales, we beat Brazil, so. I mean, there was a couple of better Brazilians and, and them two, bless them. So I shouldn't name them. Oh, sorry about that. I don't think that's how. <laughs> Brilliant. This is from John Malarkey. Um, we've all seen how well Joe Piggott has been lately, but do the coaching staff feel the same frustrations as some fans when he challenges for headers from keepers' kicks? Who, who challenges? Joe Piggott. Uh, I think he's done. Do you know what? Uh, right, this is this is one for everybody. When we go and see the opposition manager, they, they always say that he dominated their centre-halves. They all say that he's dominated. And Ryan said the pit, your two centre forwards are too good. They've been dominated. They dominated our centre half, so they're not happy. So it's funny. It's funny how you look at it like that and look at it. And then someone else says that to you, you think, wow, you don't see it from that side of it. So no, I'm happy the way. I'm happy the way he's 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 up there. He's he's doing great. Brilliant. This is from Dominic Tumor. Hi, Glenn. What what are the general feelings of the players knowing we are a fans' own club? Do they feel we are different from other clubs? More or less a yes or no, please. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, 100%. They, they, they all know that, don't they? Just yeah, to, that's well documented. Yeah. This one is from Robster. Do we need another signing at the back? Yes or no? Um, no, we've got, no, we've got, we've got, we've got enough. We've got enough, I think. I mean, again, again, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, I think, I think we've got enough, but we'll, we'll, we'll see what tomorrow brings. 
Right, we're getting there. We, we, we're going to rattle through this. Um, right, this is a great one. This is from Andy O'Brien, who is the most wonderful community worker from, from Merton, who looks at, after all the high path crowd, who are no longer the high path crowd. But, but, but Andy O'Brien, what an absolute star this man is. And it's, and it's a great question, too. Who's the money on to score the first goal at Plough Lane? Oh. Competitive, obviously. Oh. Well, does he want to put a bet on? I can't, I can't say, I can't quote anything on the betting. Well, now, you, you don't know the odds. Who do you think is going to score the first goal at Plough Lane? Who do I think is going to score the first goal at Plough Lane? Uh, for, obviously for us. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Don't know. One, of my, one of our centre-forwards. One of our centre-forwards. Uh, well, I'm going to turn around. I know who I'd like to score that first goal at Plough Lane. And I'm going to say Will Nightingale. I'd love to see him score that first goal at Plough Lane. Uh, yeah, well, that'd be amazing. Anyway, um, this is from Matt Cooper. You and Wally were my favourite players growing up. Ah, oh, I even led, led the, the teams out against Hull back in January 83. God, you're getting old, Matt. You really are. Um, how do you look back on those times? Are you looking to instill that same sort of spirit in the squad? So you've got to say really quickly, Glenn. You know. Well, I think that, that game, that might have been when Wally broke his ankle. That, that, we played Hull at home in the early 80s and, and, he, and he tackled the goalkeeper. Well, he didn't tackle the goalkeeper. The goalkeeper didn't have the ball, but an attempt to tackle and he ended up breaking his ankle. So that's that one. They, they, were, they, were, they were great times. They were great times. Yeah, they were brilliant. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's you know, just want to try and see if we can get them days back. Right. Okay. The, 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 the final two questions here. Uh, uh, Mark Jones, uh, what a question this is and one that I fully endorse. Um, this is from Mark. I'm not saying this myself, although I completely agree with him, so I guess I am. Um, I'd love the pub to be called the Batsford Arms. In fact, I insist... Do you agree Alan is the godfather of the Wimbledon spirit? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was looking at that. It was either going to be a sports from the Bats of Arms. Could be Nelson's, the Dunn's Buddies. There's a few little ones, but I think, I think that will go down well. The, the Bats of Arms, are 100%. Could not agree more. What a legend Alan Batsford is. Fantastic. Now, he's, he, he, he's a good one. Um, I, I'd like to see you do this. This is from Robster, and I, I think this is my favourite question of the night. So, um, so here we go. Will you do a somersault when we beat Milton Keynes? <laughs> you, is that you? Yeah, no, no, you. It's for you. It's not for me. Do a I can't do a somersault. You, do, you can do a somersault, though, can't you? I won't. I won't be. Well, this might be live on the telly, so I won't be doing any somersaults. I'll be doing somersaults inside. Don't worry about that. I'll be enjoying it. I won't be doing a somersault. I'll leave the somersaults to uh, to you, I. Yeah, no problem there. A little, 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 little bit of uh, the high beam and so on. Well, ladies and gentlemen, um. That is, uh, that we, we have got through a, a, a heck of a lot here. We've done a lot of injury time. We've had no, no um, half-time break. Um, and uh, I, I think it's been amazing. It just leaves me to um, thank Glyn very, very much for uh, coming on tonight and answering all those questions as openly and as wonderfully as, as, as he just did. Um, I think it's been quite amazing. Great effort from... Uh, Graham and, and Hannah again to put this on and thank you to everyone for participating. Um, it really has been uh, a, a great evening. Um, obviously, we are always, we've answered 51 questions on the Q&A and, and, and uh, I think it's 24 on the sheet before I end. That's, that's pretty good going, 75 questions. You've done, done really well, Glenn. You should be proud of yourself. Um, I enjoyed it. It's brilliant. Thanks for the questions and the attendance. It was... Uh... What did we get up to? What numbers on the attendance was it? Was I, it? Thought, I thought 240. 240. When you think there's a lot of people there with twos and threes. So, yeah, we've, we've, we've probably had best part of 400 or so watching this tonight, which is amazing. Uh, and thank you very, very much, everybody, for attending. I can't wait to... Yeah, I can't see you all. Um, you, you can all see me, I guess. And I can't wait to see you all in person and welcome you into Plough Lane. Um, with a traditional Wimbledon welcome, with a warm smile and uh, come on in, let's go and smash the world up as we always have done. And Glyn's going to be very proud to lead those teams out when we do that. And uh, I hope everybody stays safe and gets through this horrible pandemic properly. And uh, come on, you Dons, let's have it. Thank you very much and good night. Cheers, I. Thank you. Good night.